has been 15 days and the rescue operations at the SLBC tunnel are still continuing. We are right now at a model which has been prepared uh, by uh, the you know, SLBC rescuers where the uh, tunnel boring machine here which has right now stuck inside is shown. So this tunnel boring machine which is right now inside a 40 uh, uh, four kilometer distance is where the incident had taken place. Now this machine in front has the cutters which are usually are used to cut the rock and the solid part while the boring is going on and these pockets is where the residue, the, the rocks which have been crumbled fall, fall in this and from here is where the rocks will come back and through a conveyor belt the, uh, you know, the particles of the rocks are sent outside. On the other hand is where the cementing, the concrete structure which is there that is being, that will be placed uh, uh, at a place after the pouring is done. So here the speculation or the, the reports which suggest that there was a fault zone to which the experts have stated is that the tunnel boring machine has already crossed the fault zone and uh, moved inside uh, the rock part, hard a rock like structure 20 meters deep and the treatment here was done but after the treatment is where the fault zone had cracked and uh, unexpectedly the incident has taken place in, in this particular region. From here till here is where the whole water and the mud is seen gushing uh, inside and the whole TBM machine at this part has collapsed. However, the 20 meter radius of this uh, tunnel boring machine is right inside a rock and this is where it said that the people, the eight people who are uh, being, uh, who are the measures for, for whom the rescue operations are going on are stuck in this particular portion and here is where the rescue teams are able to operate and try to reach at this point but when it comes to this point is there is a muddy or a gushy layer which is not letting them go inside so every technology uh, is being used scientific methods are being used uh, the Indian Army, Indian Navy, uh, the uh, Singarini collieries, uh, rat miners and all the other instruments or the uh, agencies are being used uh, to rescue these eight members. Now the government has also come forward with a plan to uh, send a robotic uh, machines inside to remove or desilting of this layer where the man is not able to desilt in this particular uh, situation. A, a partial part of it is done uh, by the agencies who are right now uh, conducting the rescue operations but to minimize the loss of life in this particular area and the further to minimize the further risk in this particular area, the authorities are planning to send robotic machines inside to desilt or uh, send the whole muddy or the residue or the debris outside through this uh, from this point. Now here from this point the residue will be removed and from here is where the conveyor belt will take forward 14 kilometers and then the uh, residue or debris will be brought forward after which it is said that uh, the uh, you know the eight people will be uh, rescued is what the authorities are uh, said to believe. What happened is that uh, this we are doing this tunneling under under a reserve forest, there's a tiger reserve on top and it was because of this reason that the tunnel boring machine was used that we were not allowed to do any exploration on top and any kind of investigation campaigns when this work started and hence whenever there are hidden pockets inside it's very difficult to estimate. What happened in this particular incident was that a pocket was identified, that pocket was treated as well and the tunnel boring machine went through the pocket and cleared the pocket. However, Probably there were other pockets ahead which could not be picked up because of the overburden 300-400 meters of height that the tunnel was under. And then where the cutter head or the cutting part of the TBM went ahead, behind that there was a collapse. Unfortunately, the collapse was so huge that it covered about 300-400 meters of zone with muck and almost 2-2.5 to kilometers with water. So the initial part of the operation was first to even reach the site to dewater for us for to, to do even initial assessment. That dewatering also itself took about three to four days, five days because there was already a lot of water coming here. We know this is an irrigation tunnel. We are under a reservoir. We are trying to take water to another reservoir. Well, could this have been avoided according to your experience as an expert? Can, because they say that reports have suggested there is a fault zone or something like that. Would have been would see, see, have see been there was a there is there was a local test which was carried out, which gave out a shear zone. That shear zone was treated. And the cutter had gone ahead of that shear zone also. So actually, reasonably, we were ahead of that particular shear zone. Probably even ahead of that, there were some shear zones and such series of tests are being carried out on the site consistently. It would have just happened that in this case, the shear zone just ahead 
would not have been picked up by the test or sometimes it happens in in such sites that there are some hidden pockets which get activated either by temperature or because of some change in water so it becomes very difficult to uh, to predict when you could not have carried out a holistic analysis of the alignment like we do for other tunnels yes if in this tunnel also we had carried out a complete assessment before we started the work we would have be more intelligent we would have been more intelligent about the geology that we would encounter but because of the reserve forest and the permissions the way they were this could not be carried out so we were like groping slightly in the dark as far as this geology was concerned it was 300 meters below however even for that this is a freak incident such kind of silt such amount of water in such little time in a geology like this is not expected so it's a freak thing reasonably the good engineers the best of engineers could also not have guessed that this could happen i think what we need to do today this project started in 2005 today we have more technology available we have uh, air uh, you know aerial means available to carry out some kind of geophysical non intrusive tests we should now carry out those more of those so that we have a good amount of knowledge about uh, the geology that we are working in the other thing is that we need to probably as technical people explain to people that in a drill and blast method where we can go for a smaller cross section and we don't need to do the whole 10 meters and like in a tbm in such places where we don't have much knowledge that would be better the concern is would the blast wave disturb the forest it's not scientifically true good blasting practices will prevent the waves traveling to the surface and we still can go through the balance part of the tunnel and i think we should go ahead with that so here where is the problem lying and where is the expected zone where the people are said to be trapped in this particular model in this particular model the problem happened here right at the uh, at the back of the cutter head this is where the collapse happened and then and then the complete silt traveled behind what likely could you know what could have happened is first there would have been water and silt yeah water and silt and secondly after the first gush of water and silt the rock on top would have broken furthermore the aperture would have opened and lot of debris have come so as we are trying to clean from behind keeping our own rescue people safe we are seeing that that on top there is debris below is water and silt unfortunately the people were working close to the cutter head and some people were cutting were working 20 meters behind where they would have moved with that water and silt and where they would have run away is very difficult to guess so but the only way we can do it is scientifically approach from the behind while do some intelligent guesses using sniffer dogs using gprs and we are doing all that so we are doing some manual interventions ahead also scientifically we are coming from behind to a certain zone where we can use excavators subsequently we'll wash down the machine to locate where the remains are and after a certain point if we do not locate them and if they are really at the bottom we have to take a call do we want to risk more people so this is how we want to do it because we want to give closure to the families yet ensure that we have safety of our own crews with camera person naresh abdul bashir nagar karnataka